Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing our series on the lesser known figures of the Napoleonic Wars and today we'll be looking at General Van Damme. The man who was to become General Dominique Joseph René Van Damme was born in Cassel in Flanders on the 5th of November 1770. He enlisted in the army at 15 in 1786 and rapidly rose through the ranks of the Royal Army. Like many of our Frenchmen in this series, Van Damme didn't need the chaos of the Revolution and the democratic meritocracy of the Republican Army to reach a high rank. By 1793, he was Brigadier General. He was heavily involved in the fighting of the Revolutionary Wars, campaigning in the Low Countries in 1794 and in Germany for the next two years. His tenure here ended with a court-martial for looting, but France couldn't afford to throw away experienced generals and in 1799 he was back, facing the Austrians in what's now Baden in Germany, commanding the detached flank. Being super sneaky, Van Damme conducted a night march, which even today is quite a difficult thing to do, with all the communications that we have available to us. And he was due to attack the Austrians from the rear. However, it wasn't the devastating blow that it could have been. The best Austrian commander of the entire Napoleonic Wars, Archduke Charles, had reinforced his position with six battalions of Hungarian grenadiers and twelve squadrons of Karaziers, personally leading them into the fight. His grenadiers, experienced and battle-hardened as they were, objected to the exposure of the crown prince, one actually grabbing the bridle of Charles's horse to stop him. As the Archduke prepared to dismount and lead his men on foot, Karl Aloysius zu Fustenberg stepped forward to volunteer, reportedly stating that he would die first before allowing the Archduke to put himself in such danger. As Karl Fustenberg led the Hussars and Grenadiers into a counter-attack, he was hit by a French case shot and killed. Archduke Charles did eventually lead his Grenadiers, and the French momentum was not only arrested, but reversed. saint troops had stalled until Van Damme's assault, but both withered under the Archduke's counter-attack. On a bit of a tangent from Van Damme and his career, but that was a pretty cool story that I wanted to tell you about Archduke Charles. I really like Archduke Charles. The, co the campaign was to end in defeat for the French, but the directory that ruled French at the time, and certainly wasn't shy of guillotining unsuccessful generals, and later in his career, Napoleon, when studying the battle in his exile in Elba, both held Saint-Cyr and Van Damme not responsible for the loss. However, disagreements with other generals, including General Moreau, he was relegated to commanding the occupying forces in Holland. In 1805, we see Van Damme's greatest achievement, the Battle of Austerlitz. As an aside, my first ever proper, in inverted commas, Napoleonic game, was I took the role of General Van Damme at the Battle of Austerlitz. Uh, as part of Marshal Soult's 6th Corps, his division fought next to saint Hilaire to capture, or recapture, depending on how you look at it, the Pratzen Heights. This is often seen as Napoleon's greatest tactical achievement, but it was through the skill, leadership, grit, determination, blood and sweat of Van Damme, saint Hilaire and their troops that this tactical masterstroke was carried out. Napoleon wasn't blind to this, and as a reward, General Van Damme was awarded the Grand Eagle of the Légion d'Honneur. During the War of the Fourth Coalition, he didn't march with the Grand Army, but instead besieged Breslau. Upon taking the city and sacking it, he ordered its defences destroyed. Again, Napoleon was generous with his praise, naming Van Damme the Count of Unzerberg. During the Danube campaign, he commanded a small Württemberger corps. Unlike other corps commanders, he was not named Marshal and he commanded these men throughout Germany and Bavaria, leading them at Arbensberg, Landschutz and Eckmull. At the latter, the assault was led by Van Damme's German troops, these soldiers storming the bridge at Eckmull, and even captured the town Chateau despite fierce Austrian resistance. He avoided both Spain and Russia, instead being on occupation duty in Germany. This was because he did not play well with others. He had a fierce temper and would argue with other commanders and was not beyond being insubordinate or publicly criticising other generals, even going as far as to criticise the Emperor himself. 
surely the reason that he was never made a marshal. He was also a brutal man. His sacking of Breslau was unusual for Central Europe at the time, and more reminiscent of the Thirty Years' War's sack of Magdeburg. He was a rapacious pillager, perhaps only second to Marshal Massena. Napoleon is said to have told him, If I had two of you, the only solution would be to have one hang the other. So why keep this troublemaker around? It was because of his viciousness. It was because of his brutality. It was his, because of his insubordination that this made him a storm commander par excellence. If one has to compare Napoleon's generals and commanders to weapons, La Salle, perhaps a flashy rapier, nay, a sturdy sabre. Van Damme was a sledgehammer. When a position needed taking or an attack needed spearheading, he was your man. Napoleon once said that he would give Van Damme the command of the vanguard were Napoleon to launch a campaign against Lucifer himself. After the disaster in Russia, the Allies pursued the retreating French through Germany, and in 1813 Van Damme's first corps was attacked by the Allied Bohemian Corps as they retreated after the Battle of Dresden. While his troops were engaged at the Battle of Kulm, a corps led by the Prussian general Friedrich Graf Kleist von Nollendorf fortuitously attacked the French from the rear. In the consequent disaster, Van Damme and 13,000 of his men were captured. In his captivity, he was to be treated with especial harshness, presumably for his looting and pillaging of Germany. At the end of the war, the French wanted little as possible to do with him, and he was forbidden to enter Paris. Louis XVIII sent him back to Cassel in disgrace, and thus, free of all obligations towards the Bourbons, when Napoleon returned, he joined his emperor without hesitation. The emperor made him a peer of France. In the Hundred Days campaign, Van Damme continued his run of swerving major battles and was in command of the Third Corps under the direction of Marshal Emmanuel Grouchy. He urged Grouchy to join Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo, but the Marshal preferred to pursue the Prussian Third Corps under General Johann von Thielmann. After winning the Battle of Varvre, but losing the war, after the restoration of Louis XVIII, Van Damme was exiled to America and settled in Philadelphia, amongst other French military exiles. He was allowed to return to France by the ordinance of 1st December 1819 and was re-established in the service in the Etat Major General until his final retirement on 1st of January 1825. Afterwards, he lived alternatively in Cassel and Ghent, occupying himself with the writing of his memoirs. He died in his native Cassel aged 59 in 1830. So that was the life of General Van Damme. A very brief rundown there. I'm trying to make these a bit shorter, a bit pithier. Uh, on the tabletop, so there's no specific figure for General Van Damme, but any particular, you know, any sort of general the division will probably do. I use the one that's on the screen now because I think he looks the most aggressive and the most vicious. Uh, and that should really be reflected in his rules. I think he should be a strategy rating of, of 7, probably 8. I think that's fair enough. And I'd also give him the aggressive trait as well. I think if you're going to go with 7 as his strategy rating, which is, you know, average, um, then I'd give him a bonus to charge or, you know, to attack. So I'd say if a unit from his division charged or won the last round of combat, then they get plus one to the combat result. So that's in addition to the plus one to hit. They also get plus one to the the resolution of the future combat. However, I think that needs balancing out a bit. One of the key parts of Van Damme's career was that he wasn't very popular. So I think he should be unable to use the CNC reroll. That's an addition from second ed of black powder that your cnc he gives one of his commanders a turn a re-roll if they fail an order well i guess even if they pass the order they can still use a re-roll but he's not allowed to to benefit from that and he wouldn't listen to his superior if he told him what to do and that's even if the superior decided to waste the energy telling him what to do additionally while they get the plus one to combat resolution for if they won the previous round of combat i would say that when they started to lose, Van Damme was 
one of the first to think that the situation was worse than it was. So on the attack, he'd think it was better, and on the defence, he'd think it was worse. So if they lost the last round of combat, I think they should lose one to their combat resolution as well. So if a, if a battle's going well, he's great. If it's going poorly, then he's a negative. That's basically it. So that's it for General Van Dam. A very brief one. I thought he was an interesting figure to have because he was throughout the entire Napoleonic Wars. And as I say, he was the first commander I ever used in my first proper Napoleonic game. Uh, or oh, 30 years ago, it must be now. So that's it. Thank you very much. And see you in the next one. Goodbye.